Hey guys, um, coming up next, uh, tail panel and the weather stripping channel that goes around the uh, quarter panel and up to the lower deck for filler panel. Uh, yeah, there's a couple things I didn't notice till just the other day about how this fits in relation to the trunk pan. And that's my bad, but worked out for the better. Stay tuned. So don't mind the other holes that I have in here that are all oblong and stuff. They're going to open up pretty big for me to do the plug welds and whatnot. That's part of the uh, building one of these cars is, or rebuilding one of these cars is you take screws out. Uh, for, at least for me, I'll take it out a hundred times just to make sure something's right. But what I'm talking about here is these holes specifically. What I was saying about like I noticed something wasn't that quite right. So there's holes in the trunk pan itself that go through. And then I was reading some people were talking about the tail panel seeing... The holes in a tail panel are accurate. Those are the ones you want to go off of to ensure alignment of like the bumper and the, <coughs> excuse me, the trunk pane. Well, it screws it up. The brackets that AMD set, as you can see, are kind of high. And if you look down in there, that little piece of metal down there, that's the trunk pan itself. And these line up, that lines up. Even on the corner there, I mean a little bit of finagling, that lines up and sit a smidge low on the passenger side but you can see where they kind of line up over here it looks really good gaps don't look too bad around here and this gets pretty good and well it is pretty good for alignment so yeah i got to take some uh my uh air grinder whittle this down a little bit and then re-put the bolts in and to make sure everything's nice and tight but anyways like i said in the intro the, uh, when I was prying up on the tail panel with the, uh, when I had the three eight extensions to push this entire area up, worked out for the better because it rotated the quarter panel and gave me better gaps on the door. So it, it, that, that was the, the part that made it work out better for me. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, coming up, uh, shortly we'll be, take the panel off, whittle those holes out a little bit. And yeah, that'll be a uh, next next part, and, uh, and I'll show you the next problem I got to deal with underneath because it was a problem with the AMD rear cross member, and didn't realize it till went to put the tail panel on, and I should have realized it. I didn't realize it four months ago when I welded it into the tail pan. All right, panel off, little holes, and then to me put the uh, tail panel back on. to hold the quarter panel to the tail panel and I just got this in here to keep it you know tight tight to the quarter panel here actually I need to loosen that up a switch I'm gonna bring it in some more let me redo that real quick what's that I gave it a, I gave it a dugga dugga loosen this clamp up here see how it popped in and it's one of the things you take your time working around a little bit. I mean, it sticks in a little bit here. Like I said in another video, that don't bother me too much because it wasn't perfect from the factory. And by the time you get paint, a little bit seam sealer, all that stuff, you'll never notice it. So get your clamp tight up in there. Get yourself a big old uh, 12 inch C clamp from Harbor Freight that's actually spreading apart because it's chi China. And uh, what I did was I ground down the, the foot of it. And 
This kind of puts the radius up in there. And look at my little real sure you get some more of these guys because it comes in pretty handy for this part. Um, yeah. So one of these clamp down in here. Shove this in through the tailgate hole. Make sure you got everything. Yep. Sure it's good. And this roundup part here is gonna go up against there. In theory. There we go. This. Like I said before, it's going to bend the quarter a little bit. So what? I get easy ha hammer and dolly that out. And what we're going to do is, or I'm going to do it. Got my uh, interior fork here. That takes all the interior panels and modern cars. And give that some fluffer in there. And actually give us a little more leverage. Shove it in. And if you tighten down on it, you can see how it's starting to move in. And then you get use the C-clamp. A little leverage. What's nice about these guys, the small ones, is like the duckbill one covers that much area. If you want to just do a little increment, use a little one. So I get my big hand in there. You see the quarter panel moving in, the tail panel moving in. Wasn't me able to squeeze it on it. There we go. Push it on this a little bit. Tell you where you like it. Clamp it, release it, there you go. Pretty simple. Makes it nice and easy, straight. Gives it a little, you know, just flush the edge, flush up, up in here, flush down there, lines up. It's really that simple. It's like, you know, it took me five minutes to figure that out, how I wanted to do it, because I kept trying to pry it, push in on it, and all that stuff. So, yeah, cool. All right. All right, so underneath your car, and you can see I have a little bit of a problem over here. What happened was, when I put the rear cross member to the trunk, I really clamped down on it to get it to actually fit to the trunk because there was a bit of a gap. Didn't think much of it. Yeah, well, here's the lie. The problem will happen. There's a good half inch gap there at least. So what I gotta do is get a piece of metal, cut that, weld it to it in a couple spots, and then uh, extend that down a little bit. Oops. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, all this stuff is all GM restoration AMD stuff and it's supposed to kind of be right. Apparently this cross member wasn't. But some of the stuff that I read, people have nothing but problems with that particular cross member. So, yeah, um, I guess that's uh, me making a quick, temp quick template and cut some metal out, all that bad boy in, and that's, uh, I don't think I'm going to record that because it's, well, pretty cut and dry. So that way you can just get lost in my own head and bolt it in there and have at it and I'll just show you guys the aftermath. Alright, uh, yeah, you'll, when, next clip will be me finishing this up and uh, that'll be coming up next. Alright, there you go. That's after uh, a little bit of grinding and welding and all that stuff. The excess stuff, I mean, I'll just cut when I take the uh, tail panel off and I'll cut it and shape it to there. So yeah, that's, that was that. And I guess about an hour and ten minutes later. I guess. I mean, it's not perfect, but like I said, this is all going to be uh, have bed liner underneath of it, so some of the stuff you just it's going to go out to the wayside. You won't see some of the irregularities of it. So, okay, cool. Um, I think next up, I'm not sure. Um, hold tight. I'll figure it out. All right, I'm just messing around, trying to get ideas of how to go line body work and stuff. Uh, like I said, I'm not sure if we're going to get the anvil, carbon fiber, or lid. Yeah, it's, I still might order it. But for now, um, my OCD is kicking in. And uh, I'm learning too with this. I'm going to try a few different things. So I had to put a, a small washer 
yeah, washer on that side to raise it up. But you can see the deck lid here goes under and slides under pretty good there. So, piece of wood, and all you gotta do is just work your way down with it. Use the weight of the uh, deck lid. Get in there. And get it right on the other side, it's a little easier. And all you're trying to do is just use the weight to bend it down. Get up underneath. Oops. You're basically just working that outer edge to match the contour of the quarter panel. Since it's slightly different than what the factories, uh, the GM stampings work compared to AMDs. You're not really, you know, it's not like a total crash on AMD, I'm really not. It's, you know, part of the game of buying aftermarket parts, you know, fit like the original. There you go. A few minutes of work, not even a few minutes of work, and it gets a nice and smooth transition over over top to the uh, quarter panel to the uh, deck lid, and that simple. Uh, don't take long, a few minutes. All right, see coming up next is, yeah, might as well do it because it's gonna be a pain. Um, I think I might take the tail panel to do it, see if I can sneak it in there. Bring the camera around here real quick. Open the shutter up. There we go. Uh, this. So, I've heard about stuff like this before and other people have the same problem. Uh, like I said, before, I think in my last video, I talked about the other side, coming from the back and the passenger side for the quarter panel, for the uh, mother stripping channel goes. Well, I go out, I still have the fender, yeah, fender, still have the quarter panel from the side of the house. Then when I cut it off a month and a half ago, yeah, it takes me forever to throw stuff out like that. Because I like having everything until I finish something. And I've still not quite done this project yet. Uh, I think I'm just going to slice this from back here all the way up, bring it over, clamp it, put some copper in the back, tack it into place, give it a once over, grind it, and uh, that'll be that. So, yeah, I think I'll put a time lapse on of it just because, well, it's just work. I mean, it's not really rocket surgery here. Um, if you really want to learn how to like weld cheap metal, cut it, form it, all that stuff, you know, there's plenty of stuff on YouTube to go watch how to do that because I'm not really good at it. I just keep at it till it actually gets done, till at least to where I'm happy with it. So, yeah, uh, go pop the clamps off of here, maybe lift this up a little bit get my Dremel because it has a small blade on it and it gives it a real fine curve versus my you know cut off my four and a half inch grinder with a uh, cut off wheel because that's got a sixteenth inch blade in it and it's just sixteenth? Eighth inch, eighth inch blade and that's just going to take out too much material for where this particular area is. So let me get uh, the stuff off, time lapse set up and uh, alright enjoy.
so uh, apparently it took out a lot more, uh, got, got, got a little bigger than I thought it was going to. So how I came to determine to slice the tail panel was the weather strip channel. Um, so this actually goes up underneath. Uh, doesn't fit that well because a couple of reasons. One, this flange is too big and it's got to be ground down. And the second reason is on the factory quarter panel, there's a bend here. They got the you know, come down from the quarter panel, step, another bend, step. It's, not, it's too open of a bend here. So that was another, there's another problem with AMD stamping. And the other big thing is it's too wide. So I, I got to trim this back to less than a half inch of width from the inside edge to the out, probably like around 490 thousandths. Because this goes up underneath like that. And it has different recesses for where there's overlaps of like where there's a doubler back here for the weather strip uh, channel and the same for up near where the deck filler panel is. But anyways, there's the radius. If I can get in there correctly. It's kind of lay on top. It's halfway decent. So that's about the radius. Looks pretty close. Um, so that's why I chose to slice the tail panel. Some scrap steel that I had laying around from one of the uh, old door skins that were that I chopped off last year or earlier this year. So what I'm going to do is going to mark it, leave it a little long on the back side so when I take the tail panel off I can uh, finish it there because this way I can tack it on either side and still have it held into place once I take the tail panel off. So yeah, that's uh, me cutting, fitting, tacking and then I think that's it for the tail pail and I can take it off after that clean up where I need to clean up redo the copper weld in a few areas and then uh yeah break out the uh, hot metal glue gun and put this thing permanently in place cool so yeah grinding cutting welding coming up next guys so that's uh i mean i still gotta take the tail panel off i'm gonna put the weather strip channel in there just to show reference now you see how it kind of matches the contour of that like i said i still gotta trim the quarter panel to get it over and back a little bit but actually like i said trims fits in there and once i take the tail panel off i can uh finish that weld in there grind smooth maybe get a couple super light tacks in there just to metal finish it but yeah that's Pretty much it for the tail panel. Nice. Um, cool. Getting there. So yeah, let me take the tail panel off and finish that. And then uh, next thing up coming up will be a few areas where I need to touch up the copper well through primer. Uh, like underneath here, up around here, a few spots where I wiped it off. 
this from taking this thing in and out a bunch of times. So cool. Yeah, take it off and then let's go up next. Hey guys, now that I got the uh, tail panel finished for where it's gonna go and cut the weld through touched up and all that fun stuff. Uh time to put it on. Um, cool. Yeah, it's starting to become a car again. Well, at least a shell of a car. So that's the uh the best aftermath of uh, grinding it afterwards. Nah, it looks you know, like crap, but we're never gonna see it. This is gonna be up underneath. So, all right. Um, yeah, I guess time to clamp this bad boy on. You already saw the tricks that I'm gonna do with the 12 inch C clamp and a piece of plastic to push the corners in, screw everything back in, and uh, break out the welder. Um, I have the old piece of trunk floor, cross member, and tail panel sitting there. I'm looking at it. Like most of the stuff on this had like like I said around the wheel wells and drop offs and all that all had like some sort of like adhesive around it. This doesn't from looking at the old one. So I'm just gonna leave it open and use the spot welder on it. Because that's the problem I had last time trying to do the spot welding around the window channels and down along where the trunk drop off is. The panel bond was not letting the weld melt together, the two pieces of metal melt together. So that was my bad. I was hoping too much for that little Harbor Freight spot welder to do its job. So, all right, guys. So uh, coming up, it will be you know, pretty good. Like I said, my favorite time lapses and YouTube music. All right, enjoy.
All right, now I get the. All right, now I got the uh, tail panel on air clamp on there and screwed in pretty good. Um, I'm gonna go wait to do that because I need to make the tail panel flex to the floor pan because there's a gap probably about you know about that big. So we got everything welded in place. Make sure the dimension from the lower deck floor panel to where I measured on the tail panel that doesn't move in a little bit. So I want to weld it up on those sides there, and those sides there, and I'll come back and weld those. So yeah. Um, since I didn't put any panel bond along the bottom there, I'll just use my spot welder for that and try to make it look kind of factory. And then long hair is going to be, the, yeah, again, the quarter inch drill bit trick on the drill, ball it out a little bit, and then hit it with the spicy hot metal glue gun. And then on the inside, where the tail panel meets the quarter, um, yeah, I'm going to see if I can try to torque myself in there and uh, hopefully get that welded in. And then over here, I need to, since I only have a couple small um, play scripts, I need to get one down in there and close that gap up a smidge before I weld it into place. Uh, so yeah, um, cool. Time lapse of me doing some welding. Holy crap, that freaking thing's heavy. Uh, so yeah, cool, you just watch me weld the uh, tail panel in the back, down here along the bottom with the spot welder. Uh, it actually worked today, which is kind of nice. But the next coming thing coming up is going to be welding in the corners. This is gonna be one weld with a drill, uh, eighth inch drill bit through, and then a fill with weld on both sides. 
and then the next thing will be up will be spot welding up top. All right, a little bit more welding. Just want to stop explaining what I was doing. And uh, honestly, I actually I needed a break because, like I said, that Harbor Freight spot welder weighs something like 30 pounds. And man, that thing's heavy, and I'm out of shape. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, okay, like I say, come up more, a uh, little bit more welding, a little bit some spot welding. Come on, next. Spot welding up in here. Spot weld there first, middle, outer, outer. Well, spot weld here first, then the middle. Take clamps off. Three there. Same thing on the other side. Coming up next is going to be uh, welding the last little bit of the tail panel in. Which is, yeah, eight months now. I'm down this, this last little bit for this particular setup. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to grab my uh, couple clamps, put a couple screws in there. It looks like I can just nail the old holes. Uh, yeah, I should be able to get it. So yeah, um, so I spot welded up there. Um, I was not having, or the tips are getting like really dirty and melted like that. I guess that's the nature of the beast with the spot welder, but it's like perfect for these light applications up around there. And I'm going to be using it too for the weather strip channel. Um, actually, I could probably just panel bond that on. Oh, shit, I didn't even think about that. Uh, I'll mull over that, and when we get to that point, we'll see if I panel bond it and or weld it on there. So yeah, cool. Um, see, you took the straps off underneath. Yeah, cool. So okay, next come up is welding these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 spot bars, 13 plug welds. Alright, more time lapse. test fit in the, fit in the bumper <laughs> make sure we're uh, the holes still line up and all that fun stuff I have a feeling we're gonna be pretty good all right let's have it a go and see da, 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 da. One hole. how about that cool when I get throughout the entire process you know having to stock parts to you know put on off make sure holes line up all that fun stuff and double checking your work and measurements throughout. Yeah, it takes time, but same. But in the end, you're not going, oh, I should have done this differently, or, you know, one of those deals. I don't want to wash it. There we go. Got a pretty good gap. We're going to need to tail lace the bumper both sides. Not need to bring it down any. Nice. That's what happens, like I said, when you actually do take your time, do things right. You know, don't go too crazy. A little bit of trimming, a little bit of hammering, a little bit of forming. 
Um, you know, if you got to split a panel to make it work, hey, if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. As you can see, everything lines back up. And uh, next moment of truth, uh, show you guys the gaps. Like I said, the, on this side, it's a little big. Out in the middle here, but I won't mess with that till I uh, go to do the fit and final fit and finish. Um, if I got to split the quarter panel to match this or weld that weld over here onto the uh, trunk lid, we'll see. It's all right, close trunk. Take you guys off the tripod here. Nice. All right, let's turn on the, uh, well, actually, oh, oh. there we go. I mean, it looks huge on the camera. <laughs> Read into that any way you want. Um, but it's really not. It's like 200,000 or less, which 3 16th is 187, 25, or yeah, 187, put it 187, 5 thousandths. So, yeah. And sit down here. Let me go see, if I take your time, up in here, here's the gap all the way around it. And remember, that's here you get seam sealer in there, around the tail light panel there. So there's a little tiny bit of a gap there, but it's like I said, it's all going to get seam sealed. And you're never going to see it. And the same deal with all the driver's side. Cool. So yeah, next thing coming up is going to be the... Um, Weather strip channels that go up along there. All right, so I know I said I was going to make a video too with the uh, weather channel, yeah, the weather stripping channels in there on either side. Um, yeah, I was as I'm editing a new video, I'm up to like 35 minutes on it, and I think that's too too long or long enough. So yeah, coming up next video, weather stripping channels on either side, and then <laughs> that pile of crap over there is the old tail panel and rear cross member but I need that part off of it. The bracket for where the trunk uh, latch goes. So yeah, that'll be coming up next. All right guys, thanks for watching, subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting, all that fun stuff. Uh, till next time.